All right, hello. Uh, <clears throat> making this video to explain how we create the file uh, necessary for speedrunning Sly Cooper and the Thebius Regular. Um, this file is necessary for all three categories. Um, so no matter like what 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 it is that you're running, uh, you'll need to do this. But you only have to do it one time, and it's not that it's not that bad. A little tedious, but once once you're you're done with it, you're done with it. So. Uh, starting off here, what you're going to need is you're going to need a file that has access to the hideout and all five of the little, like, pinned-up maps that Bentley, uh, has you used to, like, navigate the hub worlds. And then you'll need two new game files. Um, I'm going to start with the, the one on the very bottom, and we're just going to load it like normal, like we would if we were going to do a new game. And then we are going to load the game to skip this opening cutscene. After that... Uh, I'm going to save, and then I'm going to save again on this file in the middle. <clears throat> now, if you would like, you can do this now, or you can do it at any point. Um, you're allowed to change like your camera controls and whatnot, and like, the speakers and music or anything you like, need to change on this like pause option screen. If you want to change that, um, you can do that now. Um, it's a little bit easier. <clears throat> You don't have to do it like during the run and like lose time. Do it. Um, so now that we've made both of these save files, I'm gonna go back down to this bottom one, um, <clears throat> just for myself. But now that I have made these two files that are both in Paris, uh, I'm gonna leave this middle one alone. And like I said, I've loaded back down to this bottom one, and I'm going to complete Paris. And the reason why we're doing this is we're going to watch this cutscene uh, on this file, and then I will uh, I'll meet you guys back in the uh, hideout. You can't escape me, raccoon. Once again, my gang and I had given Inspector Carmelita Fox the slip. I was surprised to see how well she took it. Finally, the secret police file I've been searching for all these years. With this, I could avenge my family and regain possession of our most valued treasure. It all began when I was just a kid, bouncing on my father's knee. You see, I come from a long line of master thieves who kept all their secrets of sneaking and stealing in an ancient book. The Phoebus Raccoon. Anyone who read it learned to be especially sneaky, which is why we specialize in stealing from criminals. After all, there's no honor, no challenge, no fun stealing from ordinary people. You rip off a master criminal, and you know you're a master thief. Well, on the night I was supposed to inherit the book, five visitors came unannounced to our door. My father fought to protect us, but the gang of villains known as the Fiendish Five overpowered him and ransacked our house until they found the Phoebeus Raccoonus. Our family's manual of thieving greatness fell into their filthy hands. They tore the book into five pieces and split it up, each villain disappearing to the farthest corners of the world to commit dastardly crimes. Broken alone, I was dumped at the town orphanage. There I met two guys who became my lifelong buddies and trusted crew. Bentley, techno genius and strategist supreme, and Murray, part-time driver and full-time burden. Together we pledged to track down the fiendish five, avenge my father, and steal back the Thievius Raccoonus. I knew I was about to face the toughest test of my life. On this mission, I would either become a master thief like my ancestors before me, or fail and allow my family name to bite the dust. That was a nice piece of work back there at police headquarters, Sly. Come see me if you want to check out any of your old movies. I've got them all here on my computer. Use the left analog stick to move around the hideout and the X button to select things. <clears throat> okay, so now that we're in the hideout here, you will have noticed that the game auto-saved. And you can see that right here, that we are uh, in the hideout now. But we still haven't gained any percent. Now, what I'm going to do is, uh, in order to keep this cutscene with Bentley here, um, since we are not allowed to skip this, uh, I'm not going to save again in the hideout. Instead, I'm going to load that file that I put in Paris earlier. And what this is going to allow me to do 
is I'm going to open the binoc the, the binocucom and then just before the binocucom opens like that <clears throat> I'm going to press start to open up the pause menu and what this is gonna do uh, that was really quick I got it but it was really quick so you couldn't see it so I'm gonna do it again yeah okay, you, you might have seen it there um, it's closing the pause menu <clears throat> But without me like physically closing it, it's automatically closing it. So when I close out of the binoculum, that pause menu will come back up. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to press start again to bring up another pause menu. And I'm going to go to load the game. <clears throat> and I'm going to load this first file that is in Paris. And then I'm going to press the R1 button to close the binoculum out, which will then bring up a second pause menu allowing me to load the hideout file. And what that's going to do is it's going to bring that file that's in the hideout back to Paris with having watched the outro cutscene of Paris, but still leaving the Bentley cutscene intact. <clears throat> so the inputs for this are going to be X, R1, down, X. So here we go. X, R1, down, X. And now this file is here in Paris again. And now that we've done that, um, I'm going to save one more time just to be absolutely certain that I'm here. Uh, <clears throat> but from here on, um, everything is going to take place on our hideout file, uh, with the 100% in my case. Um, just any completed file will do. And whatever file you are currently wanting to put all of the cutscenes on. So just to make that 100% clear, I'm going to delete this file. So now we have skipped the cutscene on this third file <clears throat> for exiting Paris. Um, we still have the Bentley cutscene in the hideout intact, and now we are going to go skip the other five cutscenes. So what you're going to do from the hideout on your completed file is you're going to pan over to the portrait that you want to skip. Uh, in this instance, I'm going to be doing Tide of Terror first. I'm going to open up the options menu. I'm going to go down to my Paris file, I'm going to load it, and then during the like fade out of me loading back into Paris, I'm going to press X a second time so I can select the portrait for Tide of Terror. And this allows me to watch the cutscene on the other file. I will the meet you guys back in the Paris. Time I needed to study up on Sir Raleigh the Frog. As a young man, this hot-tempered frog grew bored of his life of luxury and privilege. On a whim, he tried his hand at a bit of piracy and found it to his liking. Raleigh, who quickly became addicted to crime, was brought into the Fiendish Five as chief machinist, where his evil tinkering genius rose to new heights. The last reported sighting of this mad machinist was off the soggy coast of the Isle of Wrath a small island uncomfortably situated in the middle of a perilous Welsh Triangle. <laughs> okay, now that we are back here in Paris, um, <clears throat> on our, uh, our Paris file, we want to save the game. And it is imperative that you save the game, because if you do not save the game after having watched that cutscene, it won't save being watched, because we're going to be loading back to the hideout. So, what I'm going to do now, that I have saved the game here, I'm going to load back to the hideout on our completed file. <clears throat> and then at this time, I'm going to pan over to Sunset Snake Eyes. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to go down here, load my Paris file, and then watch the cutscene. I will see you guys back in Paris. It had been a while since I'd been back in the U.S. Next up, the notorious mugshot. Ruthless muscle of the fiendish five. What he lacked in brains, he definitely made up for in brawn. Turns out he wasn't always that way. 
He grew up as the run of the litter. A neighborhood weakling. The only friends he could turn to were usually found on the big screen. It was there that he spotted his first gangster, and he knew instantly that that's what he wanted to be. He spent the rest of his youth working real hard to get there, fueled on his dreams of great power and respect. With enough perspiration, he realized that dream. He'd become a hard-boiled, street-brawling, tough-as-nails gangster, ensuring that he'd never be kicked on or pushed around again. So he's holed up in Mesa City, huh? I've always wanted to go to that thriving American boom town. So now we're back in Paris. Once again, you want to make sure that you save the game. You always want to make sure you save the game. After you watch one of the cutscenes and you come back to Paris, you need to make sure you remember to save the game. <clears throat> Once you've done that, uh, I don't remember if I did or not, so I'm going to do it one more time just to be safe. <clears throat> Once you've done that, again, just go back to the hideout. This time I'm going to pan over Vicious Voodoo. Ms. Ruby's area. I'm going to load that Paris file again, and I'm just going to select the cutscene again. There you go. Um, this is pretty much going to be the same concept the third for uh, the priestess, Ms. episode 4 and episode 5. So I'm just going to meet you guys commentary-wise back at scary. the end of the video. Um, Teaching herself to summon the undead yeah. provided what few friends she had. A career in crime allowed an adult Ms. Ruby to punish the world for fearing her as a child. Chief mystic for the Fiendish Five, her powers allowed them to break both the laws of man and nature at the same time. Yet despite the whirlwind success of her youth, she managed to slip into obscurity. Last known sightings claim she headed out of civilization and deep into the Haitian jungle. Road trip gave me the time I needed to study up on the panda kid. Born penniless, he was fascinated by the fireworks rich noblemen set off every New Year's. He spent a decade learning the art. But when he tried to offer his fireworks to the noblemen, they couldn't see past his shabby clothes and chased him away. Humiliated, the Panda King took revenge on those who shunned him by using the very tools of his art for crime. The Fetish Five recruited him as their demolitions expert, and from then on, his explosive touch became feared worldwide. He's rumored to be perfecting some new firework technique high in the unstable Kunlun Mountains of Western China. We were on our way to the Krakarov volcano in Russia. While looking over what little information I had on the final member of the Fiendish Five, I began to notice something. 
In the four parts of the Thievius Raccoonus recovered so far, several of the pictures depict a shadowy owl-like figure, which looks very similar to the police images of the mysterious clockwork. Is this a strange coincidence, or is there something I'm missing? Um, so that concludes the, uh, the kind of tutorial for this. Um, once you've done that, <laughs> and you've saved your game for the last time after having watched the last cutscene, it doesn't matter which order you do them in, I do it in sequential order so I can remember easier which ones I haven't done. But <clears throat> once you have done that, uh, you're good to go. Now you, uh, you can move this and save this over your other files if you'd like. That way you can have multiple copies of it. That way you don't lose them. And uh, timing for the run starts now when you select, uh, when you press X to load this file. So timing would start now, right as I pressed X. Uh, and there you go. Um, I guess a little a little tip that I can give um, for, for everyone who doesn't already know this. Um, load back into Paris first, and then... Um, start your run. You If you load into Paris from Paris, it, it loads like a second faster, so... <clears throat> if you don't mind, you know, taking a few extra seconds every reset, um, loading, or starting your run in Paris from loading a file is, is a little bit faster, so... Uh, there you guys go. And, uh, I will see you guys elsewhere. Good luck on your runs.